Hello and what is up guys, Rai here and welcome back to some more Automation and BeamNG Drive. Uh, so there's a few things I really love in cars. I love having a car that is very, very light, very good at handling. I love a car that looks good too. So today we're going to do a couple of those, of those things. Uh, we're building a car using this body, using 2020 Tech. It's going to be a competitor to something like a, uh, Caterham, a Caterham, I guess I pronounce it, a Caterham, uh, like a 7620R maybe. So something new, something very fast, something very light, or maybe something a bit heavier like a Lotus Exige, or maybe an Aerial Atom. So just very light, quite expensive, um, it doesn't need a ton of power, I'm thinking like 200, 300 horsepower, but incredibly light. And we're going to make two versions, we're going to make one that's just about $125,000-ish, I think, US dollars. And then we're going to make one that is just quality spammed to high heaven, see exactly what we can do uh, when we push this car to the limit. So we're going to start off the build here. With carbon fiber, because you need carbon fiber if you want to have a light car. It's going to be a front mid-engine car. Transverse is absolutely fine. And then just double wishbone, maybe to start, I think? Maybe push rod? Yeah, you know what? It is a very expensive sports car. 125k is just incredibly expensive, regardless of what we're talking about. Definitely be on the more expensive side of all of those cars. I think Aerial Atom probably pricing, I think. Uh, but it's definitely going to have performance to match that of an Aerial Atom. So we're going with a simple four-cylinder engine, because it is light, it's cheap. I mean, the cost doesn't really matter, but it's light, so that's important, right? And it's going to rev very, very high. We're going to go for a five-valve engine, because that just sounds fun. And then the best engine material as well. And actually, maybe we can just go aluminum, maybe. You know what? Yeah, we'll just go aluminum. Mm. Nah, we'll do the best. We'll, we'll do the best. So when we quality spam it, it'll be very good. And I was thinking, too. So I did a couple testing, a couple testing, a couple tests, just to see what we could do with, with this car. Uh, and we're going to stick with probably a fair, a fairly decent engine size, a 1.7 liter Sounds just obscure enough to actually be used in this kind of vehicle, and we'll use it in 1.7 or so liter engine, and we'll go for the best of the best for there, and we'll go maybe one or two, wait, do we need any quality? I'm not too sure. So this is going to be an NA engine, of course it's going to rev pretty high, we need some quality sliders in the top end of the engine because it's going to rev very high, 12,000 RPM hopefully. Again, this is a perfect, not a track car, it's basically a, a street legal vehicle that is pretty much meant 99% of the time for the track. We're going to go for premium fuel. And then just like best of the best to be honest. We don't need any of these things. Um, because its emissions are still quite low. They are like if you go for a cap, I mean it gets to very low, but still. Emissions are quite low. Only 384 emissions. I'm not sure what that really means in real money, in real amounts, but it's it seems quite low. We'll need more on there. So plus 10 on the top, and the engine's gonna be the pride and joy of this vehicle, clearly. 10 to 1 compression ratio, and we'll include a little bit in the quality of the Bottom end? Yeah, by the bottom end. That's what we're calling this thing. Just so we're not breaking the engine here itself. We're going to go for max ignition timing probably. Then just, I think, what, 13.0 fuel efficiency. So right now, we still have almost 10, yeah, 10 octane to play with, which doesn't get us too, too far. We do get some more compression out of that. There we go. It's 12 point whatever of compression. Uh, 244 horse. Or if we go down, down here, 243. So 244 is the better choice if we get the fuel. And there we go. So right off the bat, we've got a bit of higher emissions to 526, which is a little bit high, but that's okay. Uh, we haven't really done any quality spamming really at all. Uh, we can get the emissions down too if we need to, but yeah, the, the car's looking pretty fine right now. We have an exhaust that's not coping. Uh, so 265 horsepower, 167 pound-feet of torque. That's in the ballpark of a, of a Caterham. A Caterham? Caterham? Yeah. A Caterham is a uh, 7620R. That seems appropriate for that. This car is going to be a bit heavier. But we're going to have a dual-clutch transmission, 7-speed dual-clutch, electric LSD, just, just the works, basically. And probably considerably larger tires than, uh, uh, you know, any streetable get rim would have. We're going to just thicken the fenders there. And probably even, like, it's just, like, that, that seems pretty, no, a little smaller in the front, probably. 265s, and then just widen the stance on that. Then just uh, alloy wheels, I think, to start off. And vented discs. We'll go for a four-piston setup. Now, this car's going to have an extreme amount of downforce, and the race version, or the the, the, the track version, the R version, or whatever we'll call it, is going to have even more. Uh, fully climb, we'll go downforce, max downforce there. The top speed is not going to be great, but honestly, that's perfectly fine. And we'll leave that as is. No power steering, no traction aids. I mean, we don't really need safety, we can probably have no safety in this. Uh, I mean, we need some for this model. It is a street car, after all. We'll get to the lowest possible. And then just, like, very, very basic basically. So right off the bat here, under 1,500 pounds, 
Zero sixty in the two second range already in a cost. A hundred and look at that. Right on right on target, $122,000. We have only 28 safety, so it does not meet any categories at all, probably because we've like, oh wait, we have no safety yet. So we need some safety, maybe. Okay, basic zeros. Just over 1,500 pounds, 32 MPG, but we don't have any downforce yet, so we're going to get some worse MPG. Um, so what we're going to do, I'm just going to put on the wing right now. What do we want for the wing? And then we'll just do the rest of the car. I want a front wing, too, that actually has a function in Beam and G Drive, whether, you know, instead of just placing like a lip on it, because... They don't really do anything. I'm thinking... Now, what I'll do is... We'll have this version. Uh, it looks like it's going to drive pretty good. I mean, 32 MPG is, is a nice bonus, too. 060, again, 2.9 seconds. Rear-wheel drive. We'll lower this down a bit. Lower it to uh, 270. Just for now. Uh, 3 seconds, 0 to 60. Oh, we're in the 2s. That's okay, though. But hey, a very cheap car so far. We're going to increase the aerodynamics to max quality, probably. No, we can't afford that much. Okay, a little bit less. Plus 10 it is. And 142,000, that seems seems reasonable. Definitely aerial atom probably can competition, I'm guessing. Um, we could go for carbon ceramics, everything. And that'll save us, what, 100 pounds total? 40 pounds total. At a cost of only three, <laughs> at a very small cost, honestly. We might as well go carbon ceramics. The cost is so little. Um, and yes, we are doing this body uh, for a couple reasons. One reason, it, it is a very light body, a very small body. Uh, reason number two, it looks so darn good. Um, and race number three, I mean, like, it, it, it's a pretty good body to, to design with to make it even better looking-wise. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna make a retro-ish, classic-ish, futuristic-ish design. Because I like that. It's gonna be a lot of fun to make. Uh, so what we're gonna do is do a quick time-lapse of me building the car. Uh, you know, all the fixtures and all that stuff. And then we're gonna, uh, pretty much drive this car in Beam and G. And I'll show you guys, I won't design it for you guys, but I'll just show you guys the extreme version as well. And we're gonna see just how impressive that thing can be, uh, on the track. So sit back, relax, guys. And I hope you enjoy. Alright guys, so we're starting the build for our classic wedge-shaped, pretty much a supercar, I guess. A supercar for the road, a race car for the road, sure. Uh, starting with the front end here, I'm going with this, not an actual grill in the front, because it is a mid-engine car, so we're having oh, pretty much a faux grill with some LED lights for everything in general, because that just looks, you know, kind of futuristic, kind of retro. I like it. The theme, again, is a retro, modern or, you know, concept car almost, uh, of course, with a lot of performance to boot. So basically, the front end is done here, so we have these LEDs with an actual daytime running lights underneath. A little bit of a hood power bulge there, uh, working on a bit of a design just to make sure that looks nicely too. And then working on the wheels, adding a gas cap, choosing the color, and I stuck with this yellow for now. The tires look a bit small, uh, the rims at least, that will change in a second there. Uh, basically just finishing off the touches to the front end, including the hood and stuff, and making my own sort of vent. Uh, it's still a faux vent because the car doesn't need vents in the front because it's mid-engine. Uh, I mean, it could, but it doesn't. Uh, pretty much just doing some more design there around the gas cap. Tweaking a few things here and there, adding a logo for the car. A very, very low door handle that flows with the body lines. Uh, I have added the mirror already. And then just seeing with, you know, toying with certain designs on the sides and stuff to see, uh, adding some trim pieces here and there. Now I'm just uh, adding some downforce inside the hood bulge. That way there's actual wings in the front. Adding downforce to the front is going to actually be efficient in BMG Drive. Working on scoops and some more details on the sky. Just adding a bit more detail here and there overall. Having a big old gaping back end. Uh, similar to the front of the car, but we have a functional grill there. With some faux grill where the taillights are going to be at the end there. I did add a scoop uh, and a wing at the back. So we can actually suck in some air here at the back of the car. Working on some taillights, I decided to go with these uh, three square or three rectangular shapes. Because, you know, it's similar to the front, but it's also a bit different. And then quad exhaust right at the back top there. And then working on the rear diffuser, which is going to be made pretty much by me, with a bit of tweaks here and there as well. Now I'm sort of just pandering the name, and I decided on something like the IT170 GT, because it sounds kind of the IT, the Italian 170, 1.7 liter GTE. Uh, so yeah, finally, complete in front of us is the 2020 IT170 GTE. Okay guys, so the vehicle is pretty much done. We've got the IT170 GTE, like I said, uh, 265 horses is what we're finished off with, 1,440 pounds. 
Uh, so what we're gonna do is just quickly go over the design of the car, then jump into Beam and G Drive with uh, this trim, and I'm, I've made another special trim that's gonna be way better performing, hopefully, uh, and see how they both drive in uh, some some certain tracks and stuff. So right off the bat here, again, this is a, this is a classic body. This is a classic old. I think this is what a Lancia Stratos body, basically, um, a classic old body. And what I wanted to do, like I said before, the actual build was make it sort of like a retro modern concept. I didn't take design though off of Lancia. Not really, anyways. I think I, I use it as like basic. Cause, you know, it is the same shape, right? So I use that basic stuff. So we got a, a pretty tall front end there. With we have our main headlight setup with like a bar going across the top there. We have a random triangle emblem. I think it looks pretty good. I don't know why, but I like it. Uh, basically, the theme is boxes, lines, and boxes everywhere. We did one bit of triangle there. I originally had a triangle here as well, but I think um, I just wanted more lines, more boxes. I don't know if I like that 100%, but it's something there. Um, so basically, yeah, so you have these headlights with like this grill going across here, which it's really not a grill, it is just black flat plastic in the background, which I think looks pretty good. Uh, one big air opening at the bottom with a like a splitter diffuser setup, looks kind of weird from the side, but you know, the front looks good. Uh, we have one big power hood bulge with a vent that I made basically, which is not really a vent either, I don't think. It's not a vent either, it just looks cool. And then going all the way to the back, we've got or to the side at least, we've got some more side skirt on the side, we've got some big old chrome wheels, we actually can probably make that one size bigger, like 15, even 16 is probably like an appropriate size. Um, so 16 inch wheels, uh, a lot of wing in the back, there's uh, several wings on top of one another in the back, just so it all gives us more downforce, because you're going to see that in a second, the downforce is, is just crazy. Uh, a big air intake in the back there too, and one on the side, on either side obviously, and then we have some stripes on the side. Uh, the back, Again, very, very aggressive, very much like a race car. This is a, a barely straight legal vehicle, what I'd presume. It's a 12,000 RPM four-cylinder engine, so you know, it's definitely a very barely street, you know, legal car. Um, basically, square tie lights, which they are like lines with like squares. It's similar to the front, but it's different because I don't want to copy the front in this case. I think it look kind of plain. Uh, quad outlet exhaust in the back there, I'm not sure why, because you have, you have four cylinders, you need four exhaust tips. Sounds like a plan to me, basically. Um, and then there's some new body molding fixtures which I used here to make it look a little different. And then just a big opening in the bottom there because, you know, race car. Uh, and I think the only other thing really is to show you guys, yeah, so the, the, the downforce was tweaked a bit. So we're, we are making, at maximum, at top, top, our top speed, 235 or so kilometers an hour. We are making an incredible, what, 1,570, 1,570, yeah, 1,570 pounds of downforce at 235 kilometers an hour. Uh, which obviously we're gonna actually change it just a bit because we're getting a little bit of uh, snap. That doesn't really matter. We're, we don't go 300 anyways, so that's fine. Just understand, understand, understand. That's fine. So yeah, definitely an absolute ton, a metric ton. We can actually probably lower the cooling airflow down just a bit more and lower the sound, I think, a little bit. So yeah, so a very, very aggressive wing angle. A ton of downforce, more downforce than the car weighs. Um, the car is not cheap, though. We finished off at a price of around 182000 2012 US dollars. Which is expensive, but again, it's going to compete with something like an Aerial Atom, uh, a BAC Mono maybe, except this is like an actual closed race car, I'm guessing, because it's pretty much a track car uh, with a roof, I guess? Sure, it must be pretty unique. It's the only track car really with a roof that's an actual straight-up track car. This would just dominate probably any Lotus ever made, because it's got, you know, nearly as much horsepower as uh, a Lotus uh, Avora-ish. I mean, 400 horsepower-ish, that's, that's what they got. But it's got a lot of horsepower. Definitely um, staying true to that classic retro kind of look, I think, but with futuristic touches. I th yeah, yeah, yeah. So what we're going to do now is hop into BMG Drive with both cars, and I want to go back to back on a certain track, and we'll see what these things can do. All right, guys, so we're in BMG Drive. Uh, this is... Uh... A good looking vehicle actually, transfer were quite good into Beam and G, like very good to Beam and G, looks like a very interesting modern retro concept kind of race car. Uh, so this is the automation test track handling circuit, the car is mighty loud, perfect. We're gonna hop into first person here, and we're just gonna go for a, just a drive. We'll launch from second gear because this thing has a fair bit of wheel spin, even with ridiculously oversized tires, much larger than a Caterham, or uh, any kind of Lotus. Or the Aerial Atom, or the uh, BAC Mono, which is very large tires uh, overall. And then we also have the high performance version coming up next. So far, we're going to take it a bit slower though. Uh, I've done some testing with other cars I made similar to this, not the exact same car, but similar, just crazy cars. And we can do um, around 1 minute 10 seconds, I think, on this map, which is a pretty good time. The brakes aren't perfect. 
It definitely does not like to drive on gravel too, too much there. Uh, there's some sort of fixture glitch sticking outside of the uh, the boundaries of the car, basically, which is okay. That's okay. A little bit of glitching here and there is perfectly fine. Full throttle here. Getting a bit of air there. The brakes are a bit too touchy, I feel like. Uh, I should have worked on the bias a little bit more, but that's okay. Still setting a pretty good time right now. Definitely one of the best times still. And just going pretty casually, honestly. Uh, very little experience driving this car. Just, like, what, two test laps, basically? Uh, and not even full laps at that. So we'll see what we can get with this car. I've never finished a lap with it yet. A 117. Already one of my best laps ever. Uh, I think, yeah, it's actually the best lap I've ever completed besides my crazy, even crazier car, uh, which we'll try out one similar to that right away. So a 117.1 in the automation handling circuit, which is a very, very good time. And I'll just show you the car here. So that first car had about 300 or so odd horsepower, and it was about 1,400 pounds. Uh, we have the GTX model, which is the same, just more wings put in in the front and rear. Uh, stiffer suspension that's lower, I believe as well as a turbocharged engine instead of an NA engine, uh, which is good and bad, obviously. The NA engine, you have such linear power, where this one is going to have uh, power. I think the power starts at like 6,500 RPM and it goes all the way to 12,000, pretty much. Uh, it dips down a bit towards the end, so we want to keep it in its power band as long as possible, keeping it there. We're making about 750 horsepower, so over a 1 to 1 power to weight ratio. We'll just jump into this thing. Okay, so definitely, <laughs> we're going to try that again. So wheel spin glory, I actually want to move the this strip computer over here so you can see the average speed, because that's kind of fun too to see. So yeah, definitely a lot of power. We're going to start off pretty slow, I think. Oh, wow, is there a wheel spin ever? Oh my gosh. But it is fast. It sounds a bit different. Honestly, the other one is just immediate. Obviously, we're not using full throttle input on this car, because it's just going to lose traction and spin out. It's got significantly different than wider, wider tires, I think 375s in the rear, uh, and we got 165s, so okay, we're gonna try one more time. Okay, so 365s in the rear, 375s in the rear, 345s up front, I think. We'll launch it pretty high this time. And the really, the big trick is just to focus. Oh yeah, it just definitely it does, it likes to get sideways whenever you give it the chance. Uh, so we're weighing about 1,500 pounds now, so we're about 70 pounds heavier, I think, than the original car, which, uh, you know, it's pretty surprising, honestly. We quality spend the vehicle, it's got max 15 quality everywhere. It's a much faster car, to say the least, basically. Uh, top speed for this one is about 340 kilometers an hour. And I'll show you guys, uh, like, an arrow chart if I can on the screen here. So you guys can just see, this thing makes 4,000 pounds of downforce at its top speed of over 300 kilometers an hour. 4,000. The car weighs 1,500 pounds, approximately. 1,400 pounds, approximately, or 1,470, I think? Yeah, so it's extraordinarily uh, high amount of downforce with this vehicle. Very, very, very grippy. This track is a little bit narrow for it, honestly. This thing just likes to go a little bit over the place. It's very neutral handling. Um, the issue is obviously I'm not the best driver, clearly. It's much harder to drive this car fast. I think we'll actually jump into the automation test track with this thing and just sort of see what we can do, because uh, why not? So 14.9, is that my best time? Pretty much one of the best times. Not even the best time as my best car, which was an NA, I think, four cylinder with about 500 horsepower. Uh, we're gonna hop. Let's 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 do this last time. Let's hop into the test track. But yeah, so this thing has an insane amount of horsepower. One lap only, please. So it's got an incredible amount of horsepower. So it's about 775 horsepower, I think. Um, and the car weighs about 700 or so kilograms. So it is an extraordinarily high amount, or 650 kilograms. A very, very high power to weight ratio. We'll try this one. We've got no ABS or anything, though, which is definitely its downfall. I think this one has ABS, actually. I think this, this trim is ABS. The, the base trim does not have ABS because I wanted to save my $1,000 or so where I could, and ABS was that. So I, I think I just forgot to put ABS in the base model, which is fine. Wow, absolute gobs of grip. 150 kilometers an hour in that turn right there with no issues whatsoever. The tires are quite wide. Uh, I'm not cranking the wheel all the way though, because the wheels do like to sort of shake around because there's just so much grip. These brakes are much better than the other car though, they're, they're definitely better. Look at that. Fifth gear pull, a fifth gear pull. We're getting some overheating now. Oh my gosh, we're getting air. Holy crap. We're overheating in seventh gear, not ideal. 
Oh, we got some air though. That is w absolutely wild. We're not gonna give it too much swallow because she's gonna overheat on us. I don't want that to happen. The brakes are doing pretty good. Getting a little bit hot though. A oh, boy, does this thing just absolutely pull? And the brakes are even better than you could imagine. Imagine if this thing was all-wheel drive. This thing is just rear-wheel drive, guys. Imagine all-wheel drive, 1,700 pounds, all-wheel drive. This thing would be just insane. It already is insane. It's literally, I, I don't know what the cost is, because I just said, you know, screw the cost. We just quality spammed everything on the, for this one. Wow. Oh my gosh. Speed is the name of the game with this car. A little bit on the dirt there, which is okay. Oh, we spun out uh, 155 pro probably when we go up. Well, that's fine. Look at that. Look at that acceleration. And we finished with the two minute. Obviously, uh, not the best time. We would have finished probably 155 or less, which is absolutely insane. I mean, it's not the best time. People have gotten better times, no problem. But hey, 155 for me is pretty darn good. Um, and I'm not the best driver. We know this. Um, but yeah, let's just hop back in the car here. Let's take a look, quick look. So yeah, not really much has changed. Just the color has changed just to differentiate. There is more wings involved. Uh, around 4,000 pounds of total downforce. There's lots of wings under the hood bulge uh, and lots of wings inside uh, of this rear wing, basically. T so much downforce, so much grip. The thing literally takes off, uh, which is obviously a problem. I just want to see if we, if we can launch this thing pretty quick. Can we just hit 200 kilometers an hour in this straightaway at least? Pretty much 200 kilometers an hour right there, which is crazy. Absolutely, can we do a brake stand at least? I hope it can, to be honest. Let's see. Ah, uh, the brakes don't even hold it back. We got too much power. Let's use the brake then. Oh, it just launched it. Okay, nothing we do. Yeah, you definitely cannot uh, do a brake stand with this thing. Because the brakes are not good enough to hold the car at a stop with this much horsepower obviously and the car is this light but the brakes are the tires are massive the brakes are massive look at that grip i mean obviously we'd lost grip there but yeah the car literally it's a rocket ship boy oh boy was this thing absolutely fun to make a lot of fun to drive the other one went obviously we'll if we take a look real quick yeah there's not really much differences in the looks of the car um biggest difference is really just uh it's a bit lower a little bit lower about half an inch lower an inch lower and a lot more aero, and then way quality spammed everything, um, and the car is still somewhat heavier. So I think we'll finish it off here. The IT170, GTE, and GTX are marvels of modern engineering, I would say. They're both 2020 pretty much race cars. Um, this one is 0-60 to 60 in 2.4 seconds with a rear-wheel drive car. 750 horsepower, about 600 or so kilograms. 650 kilograms, I'm guessing. It's about 1,450 pounds, so you do the math there for me. Um, we'll end it off here. Uh, this is a lot of fun to build. To build. I'll, I'll put a link down below for the base model, the GTE. If you guys want to download that, I'll put like the, the, the car file down below. If you guys want to check it out, make sure to join the Discord linked in the description. We do weekly challenges, thing like things like that. Yeah, so join the gosh darn Discord. Uh, we do lots of fun stuff in there. Uh, there's a lot of other automation people and gearheads in there as well, so it's pretty cool. Uh, and make sure to leave a like, subscribe, comment, whatever you want to do. Thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, I'll see you next time.